not sure that if you walked into my home, you would call me a minimalist. I'm not even sure if you had a conversation with me that you'd conclude I was a minimalist. Okay, if you follow me on YouTube already, you know I'm a minimalist, but just use the imagination here. See, there's this stereotype that minimalists have it all together. They have no excess, little stress, their schedules are clear, precise, controlled, and yes, they are always content, never longing to buy, change, or overachieve. I want to show you what my life looks like as a minimalist today. And perhaps by the end of this video, you'll have a different perspective about minimalism. Maybe not. <laughs> but if anything, I hope you'll understand why I've been a little quiet lately. I start my mornings just like everyone else. I brush my teeth, wash my face, make my bed, etc. I could wake up earlier to get a workout in, to put some more hours of work in, but I don't. It just doesn't work with me and my lifestyle right now. So instead, I sit in my closet, take some deep breaths, and turn my red light therapy on. This is much more healing than any workout could ever be. Following that, I fill out my one page journal entry. I don't really have a title for what this is in the morning. I wouldn't really call it morning journal time or morning thoughts because it's structured and I do the same thing every day. But it is what keeps my mind grounded as a mother of two when life is just kind of up in the air every single day. What I write down is my gratitude list, my to-do list, the things that I'm working on in my life, in my relationships, and then what and who I'm praying for. Sometimes it takes me two minutes, sometimes it takes me 10, but this is essential and an incredibly intentional practice in my life. At about seven o'clock, one of my kids, normally meanders in, finds me and snuggles. And that's when I know it's time to start our morning routine. As most mothers and humans know, mornings with children are never the same. But some consistencies you'll see in my home, in my morning routine, are candles, calm music, and a home-cooked meal. Lately, we've been loving our homemade sourdough toast, eggs, jam, and some oats for our non-egg eater. I also sip on an adrenal cocktail in the mornings for an extra nutrient boost. Following breakfast, we clean for the day and get ready. You know it's gonna be a good day when you change out of your PJs into this kind of outfit. I used to do this solo while my kids played or entertained themselves, but now we do it all together. I mean, does it take longer? Absolutely. Is it done well? Not likely, but the effort is still there. And teaching my children how to help, how to pay attention, how to take care of your home is something I really, really want to make room for. I will also get back to you at another time. We're Out going for a snow. walk. Out in snow. Out in snow. We're going for a walk. The rest of the day normally includes a walk, some errands, another round of cleaning, and some rest time for my children between 1 and 3 p.m. And this is when I work for money. <laughs> Not a ton of it, but I have started my own business and I give myself these two hours where my kids are in their room for rest time to work on my emails, my content creation, and just how I'm going to continue to encourage you guys, which brings me to my huge announcement that I'm really excited to share. I just launched a text-based subscription where you can receive a text from me and it's not to add excess to your life or more notifications, but rather to be there for you. I remember what it felt like starting my simple living journey and I felt completely isolated and alone 
which is ultimately why I decided to do this because I want to show up for the people who are truly walking the other way and it's difficult and I want to give you some inspiration, some daily encouragement, even journal prompts, decluttering challenges. I want to show up for you and I'm doing that in so many ways, but I feel like this is just so personal and a whole nother level of accountability. So if you're interested, I'll leave that link below for you guys. If you have any questions about it, shoot those to me too. There is a discount code below and it's only for a few more days. So make sure you get on that. Yeah, let me show up for you on a whole nother level. See, my days are completely normal, but did you catch the intentional things I was doing all day long? I made my bed right away. If I don't do this, my room stays messy and I feel messy too. I wrote out my thoughts, my gratitude. I prepped my mind for the day ahead and chose to see the goodness in it, even if it is a mundane stage of life. Three, my adrenal cocktail. This is how I'm caring for myself throughout the day, keeping my hormones and my energy levels stable by giving myself enough nutrients and calories. Four, letting my children help me. Giving up control is a huge lesson I had to learn in my minimalism journey and doing this with my kids, teaching them how to help even though it's not perfect is such a good life lesson for all of us. Number five, we went outside even though it was freezing. We need the outdoors, we need that sunshine. Six, I put the boys in their room from one to three. This is my intentional time where I can work and the boys are actually listening to a podcast called Lamplighter Kids and it's such a wonderful podcast that keeps their attention. I have to live an intentional life, even with seemingly simple and mundane tasks. It's what helps me live purposefully. For me personally, minimalism isn't a consistent, simple, controlled lifestyle. My life is full of intentional habits, hard work, practices, color, people, spontaneity, and it's about making room for the things that matter. For the snow and the change of seasons, do our days always go smoothly? No, I wish they did, but the reality is that tempers flare. Oh, Riker, buddy, you can't give up. I'm good. Messes pile up. I overspend on things I shouldn't. I also have an unfolded laundry issue. But what minimalism has taught me is that life isn't about me. Motherhood, it's not about me. Marriage, not about me. I play a huge role in each of these things. But over the years, I've realized that life will never be good enough. I will never find contentment if it's all centered around me. When I'm focusing on the things that matter most, intentionally raising my children, teaching them in the way they should go, having time and energy for my husband at the end of a long day, my health, finding and appreciating beauty, being outside, using my gifts to serve others, spending time with people and with my Lord, that's when I'm the most content and fulfilled version of Margaret. That's when I'm actually living life. So right now, I'm giving up extra money. I'm giving up a consistent posting schedule. I'm giving up sleep when my babies need to be in their mother's arms in the middle of the night. I'm giving up overachieving to spend time with my husband, my sisters, and my friends. I'm working incredibly hard, harder than I've ever worked in my entire life. And to the world, it's not the work they expect and I'm okay with that the thing is because I choose to put my story on the internet lots of people see me as this tidy organized minimalist but here's the truth I'm just a wife and mother trying my best to make room for the things that matter